please join in singing our opening hymn, number 699, Christus Paradox. Number 699, Christus Paradox, verse 3. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Good afternoon. Today we're very happy to welcome Sister Marianne Lopicolo, who is the Episcopal Vicar for Religious of the Diocese of Brooklyn, as we celebrate this Mass today for the deceased members of the religious um, brothers and sisters um, communities, and we pray that they may all see the face of God and live. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord, their stronghold in times of distress. The Lord helps them and delivers them and saves them, for their refuge is in him. Sisters and brothers, for those times in which we've trusted in something or someone other than the Lord, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up the will of your faithful, we pray, O Lord, that striving more eagerly to bring your divine work to fruitful completion, they may receive in greater measure the healing remedies your kindness bestows. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Daniel said to Nebuchadnezzar, In your vision, O king, you saw a statue, very large and exceedingly bright, terrifying in appearance as it stood before you. The head of the statue was gold, 
Its chest and arms were silver, its belly and thighs bronze, the legs iron, its feet partly iron and partly tile. While you looked at the statue, a stone which was hewn from a mountain without a hand being put to it, struck its iron and tile feet, breaking them in pieces. The iron, tile, bronze, silver, and gold all crumbled at once, fine as the chaff on the threshing floor in summer, and the wind blew them away without leaving a trace. But the stone that struck the statue became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. <clears throat> this was the dream, the interpretation we shall also give in the king's presence. You, O king, are the king of all kings. To you, the God of heaven has given dominion and strength, power and glory. Men, wild beasts and birds of the air, wherever they may dwell, he has handed over to you, making you ruler over them all. You are the head of gold. Another kingdom shall take your place, inferior to yours, then a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over the whole earth. There shall be a fourth kingdom, strong as iron. It shall break in pieces and subdue all these others, just as iron breaks in pieces and crushes everything else. The feet and the toes you saw, partly a potter's tile and partly of iron, mean that it shall be a divided kingdom, but yet have some of the hardness of iron. As you saw the iron mixed with clay tile and the toes partly iron and partly tile, the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. The iron mixed with clay tile means that they shall seal their alliances by intermarriage, but they shall not stay united any more than iron mixes with clay. In the lifetime of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed or delivered up to another people. Rather, it shall break in pieces all these kingdoms and put an end to them, and it shall stand forever. That is the meaning of the stone you saw hewn from the mountain without a hand being put to it, which broke in pieces the tile, iron, bronze, silver, and gold. The great God has revealed to the king what shall be in the future. This is exactly what you dreamed, and its meaning is sure. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you not be deceived, for many will come in my name saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. The Gospel of the Lord. It was 31 years ago Believe it or not, it actually feels like 31 years ago when I first entered the seminary. I was a seminarian at Cathedral per, uh, Seminary Residence in Douglaston. And a Monsignor, a very kind Monsignor, gifted me with a complete four-volume set of the breviary, the Liturgy of the Hours. And, believe it or not, I still pray with it to this very day. In fact, here it is. She's been with me all this time. She may be mature, but she's still beautiful. It was way back then that I came across the first antiphon for Tuesday of week two's, a second week um, office of readings. And I look forward to praying it every cycle. Surrender to God, and he will do everything for you. 
I was in a very difficult situation. I was really, really agonizing and not sure that I was going to be able to continue in the seminary because it's hard being in a seminary, okay? And some people, well, let's not get into it, but human beings, all right? And I was wondering, I left all of this, you know, I left a very good job on Madison Avenue as a manager of two departments, and now I find myself in a situation and I'm wondering, what in the world am I doing here? So that antiphon in Psalm 37 not only really spoke to my heart and gave me sound advice, but in fact, God did rescue me from my trouble. And I think it's really important that I say that God was there for me. And I saw the truth of surrendering to God and how God acts on behalf of the person who trusts in him. I learned the truth of being still and waiting for the Lord. Committing our lives to the Lord and trusting in the Lord is the way. And our readings today speak to this. Our first reading from the book of Daniel appears at a time when the Jewish people were under persecution from the Hellenizing Greeks. And we heard about this in the readings from Maccabees last week about Antiochus Epiphanes and all the terrible things that were taking place. So our story today is from the time 500 years before that when the Babylonians had seized Jerusalem and had sent many people into exile in Babylon and were actively trying to destroy the faith of the Jewish people. And Daniel and his companions are champions of that faith by their trust in the Lord. Daniel, the young man, is taken into the service of the king and he's trained in Babylonian astrology which a form of still exists today. A lot of people still follow this Babylonian astrology. And so he was also trained in dream interpretation. And the king had had a very disturbing dream and none of the court astrologers could interpret it. And like kings of the past in those days, if you couldn't do what he wanted you to do, you ended up not doing anything ever again. <laughs> Right? And so a lot of people's lives were at stake. And so under threat, Daniel was put on the spot and Daniel had to know the dream without being told what it was and was supposed to interpret it correctly. Now it's hard enough to interpret a dream, right? But when you have to actually know what the dream is and interpret it, that's a whole nother story. But with the power of God, he was able to do this correctly. After many seemingly enduring civilizations, as it has in the first reading, at last God's will is done and God's kingdom, after the first gold one, after the second one, after the iron one, after the one iron and clay, ultimately God's kingdom will last forever. And this was how Daniel interpreted the dream, that ultimately, after all of this succession of human civilizations, God's kingdom will be revealed and God's kingdom is forever. In our gospel today, we see that human structures and even human monuments to religion, like the temple, and that temple in Jerusalem was greatly expanded by King Herod, but he himself was hardly a monument to virtue and righteousness. But in any case, external as all of these things are, they are temporary just like every human life. They seem to be so big. They seem to be so strong. And then, like that, can be swept away. And so Jesus tells us that there will be upsets in the political scene, there will be upsets in the natural world, 
People will be scared. People will be afraid. People will even be terrified and wondering whether these are the signs of the kingdom and their faith will be tried. But God's kingdom is permanent, unassailable, and eternal. As St. Paul tells us, we walk by faith and not by sight. And we may see a lot of things that are very troubling, but remember that God's kingdom is permanent, unassailable, and eternal. The one who is surrendered to God, the one who cultivates a relationship with God, the one who follows the way of Jesus of interior transformation, that one becomes more and more like the Lord himself. If we die with him, we will also rise with him. Look around. All manner of things may be happening around us and in our own lives. But we keep faith in Jesus and we are not deceived. In his day, Jesus may have been rejected by the builders. But as we read in the book of Acts, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. So, if you are searching for life and life in its fullness, if you are searching for this life in love and by God's love, Surrender to God, and he will do everything for you. Let us stand to pray. We now turn to our God, who is the source of all grace, and to present to the Lord our prayers and petitions. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and church ministry, let us pray to the Lord. For world leaders, may God take any temptation to greed and replace it with hunger for righteousness, let us pray to the Lord. For those who experience doubt that God hears their prayers, may the peace of Christ console them and strengthen their faith, let us pray to the Lord. For this assembly, both present and virtual, as we approach the Advent season, May God enlighten our hearts to prepare the way of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the light of faith, especially Shariah Karnati, for whom this Mass is offered, and also for the deceased religious brothers and sisters for whom we are also praying, may God's face shine upon them and delight their hearts to sing his praise with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. God, our Father, you know all things. Please hear and answer our prayers according to your holy and loving will. And we ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the sacred offerings which at your bidding we dedicate to your name, and in order that through these gifts we may become worthy of your love, grant us unfailing obedience to your commands. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and a chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion hymn is number 953, Softly and Tenderly. Number 953, Softly and Tenderly. We pray, Almighty God, that those to whom you give the joy of participating in divine mysteries may never be parted from you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we will hear from Sister Marianne.
in the Diocese of Brooklyn during their years of ministry and were called home to God during this last year. It's very fitting that we take time during this month of November to remember all those who have gone home to God before us, our families, our friends, priests and deacons, and our religious community members. At the end of Mass, those of you who are at home will see the scrolling of the names of sisters and brothers who are now among the saints in heaven. Each one of these religious either lived and grew up in our diocese and parishes and entered different religious communities. They served here in our schools, hospitals, parishes, and many other areas of service. The Diocese of Brooklyn's history is one of a seedbed of religious vocations over the years, filled with large numbers of sisters, brothers, and religious order priests who helped to build and support the life of our diocese. They are such a rich part of the religious legacy of Brooklyn and Queens. During this month of November, we also celebrate National Religious Vocation Awareness Week. And we know that God continues to call women and men to consecrated life. There's a growing number of young women and men who are responding to God's call from among our parishes. So how blessed we are. So we pray for the Holy Spirit to be with us and the church as we support and encourage this new life. Yes, the cycle of life does continue, even as many of the long-established communities grow smaller. But the Diocese of Brooklyn, the Diocese of Immigrants, continues to welcome so many of the faithful from countries around the world, and along with them, sisters, brothers, and religious order priests who continue to strengthen and serve in our diocese. We are indeed blessed by our loving God with signs of new life rising from the soil of richness that is the Diocese of Brooklyn. As you see the scroll of names after Mass, say a little prayer to our new saints in heaven, and may God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you, sister. The Lord be with you. And may almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. And have a most blessed day. Our closing hymn is number 777, Christ's Church shall glory. Number 777, Christ's Church shall glory, verse 3.